Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg announcing plans to address racial inequities in the U.S. highway system. His agency will use nearly $1 billion to redesign highways that decades ago devastated communities of color. This comes as the country is set to launch the biggest infrastructure effort since President Dwight Eisenhower in 1956. Much is documented about the devastating impact of 94 in St. Paul's Rondo neighborhood. But as Fox 9's B.C. O'Neilly Erie explains, the construction of 35W in South Minneapolis was equally destructive. At the corner of 38th Street and 4th Avenue in South Minneapolis's central neighborhood, the Minnesota Spokesman Recorder newspaper remains one of the last remnants of a once thriving business district. Father founded it in 1934. Tracy Williams Dillard recalls growing up here as a child. This whole corner was all black owned and a lot of the businesses up and down 38th Street, there was black owned businesses. A record store, banks, barber shops, salons, and grocery stores were some of the businesses that occupied this 38th Street landscape. But the community would undergo a seismic shift that some didn't see coming. One of the elders, Elder Harry David, said to me, Ernest, it's like, he used the French word, Fear a complete, which means that the deed is done. It was already done before we knew about it. In 1956, a massive effort led by President Dwight Eisenhower to build a 41,000 mile interstate highway system throughout the country is given the green light through the passage of the Federal Aid Highway Act. With the federal government providing 90% of the funding in the Twin Cities, the largest public works project in U.S. history would pave the way for the construction of I-94 and 35W. During a time of economic growth and growing mobility in the country, the freeway system would revolutionize transportation, but it came at a cost. I-94 cut right through the Rondo neighborhood, a predominantly black community in St. Paul. The lesser told story is what 35W did to the African-American business district in South Minneapolis. Was there any public outcry about the construction? The African-American, the elders, and they were prominent African-American living at that time in Minneapolis. They said they had no idea what was going on until a bulldozer came in, tearing down trees and cutting down trees and moving dirt. Dr. Ernest Lee Lloyd, a retired Minnesota Department of Transportation official, holds a doctorate degree in public administration. Eight years ago, while earning his Ph.D. at Hamlin University, he wrote a dissertation examining 35W, and the disruption it caused middle-class working African-Americans, many of whom owned homes in the South Minneapolis neighborhood. Every pocket of African-American neighborhood, urban area in the United States, you would find a highway boarding them, splitting them up, or dismantling the entire community altogether. Running between 2nd Avenue and Stevens Avenue, today 35W links downtown Minneapolis to Highway 62. This is what the area looked like 65 years ago. Before construction, thousands of homes and businesses in the interstate's path were destroyed or removed. Why would transportation policy, which is racist in itself, will disrupt and destroy a neighborhood like this. Was it intentional? Was it intentional? It hurts me to say yes. It hurts me to say yes. You know, this is, this is a pattern that is taking place. Associate Professor Greg DeNorfrio is the director of the University of Minnesota's Heritage Studies and public history program. He was led to Dr. Lloyd's research while conducting his own comprehensive study 
of 35W. The racial disparities that we have here in the Twin Cities, in Minneapolis and in Minnesota, they didn't just happen. They're not natural. Um, these conditions were created. Dr. D'Onofrio says other locations in South Minneapolis were considered for 35W, including Cedar Avenue and Lindale Avenue, streets he says were in wealthier white communities at the time. And they were, they were um, ruled out fairly early on in the planning process. This photo, he says, dated March 12, 1957 in Minneapolis, documents the only known public hearing on the interstate project. So, you know, this isn't to say that, that only people of color were affected by um, the freeway and its construction, um, but people of color, black people, were disproportionately affected, and they had a terribly difficult time finding housing. It's estimated that nearly 30,000 people throughout the Twin Cities lost their home to freeway construction uprooting and dividing neighborhoods over the course of the 10-year project through eminent domain. State government forced some people out of their homes. Some homeowners were paid to leave. Already burdened by discriminatory housing practices such as racial covenants and redlining, people of color were hit especially hard. You know, when we started this project, we were looking for smoking guns. We're looking for one document that says we placed the freeway here because you know it's going to displace black people. Well, you're not going to find that. Mm -hmm. We concluded two years later, and you're not going to find that because you know, this is a manifestation of systemic racism. This eight millimeter digitized home movie was taken in front of a house on 43rd and 2nd in the 1960s. The camera captures the 42nd Street Bridge and the pedestrian bridge at 40th Street East. With no 35W entrance ramp, the freeway cut off direct access to 38th Street that many believe devastated this once vibrant African-American business district just three blocks away. Right now, MnDOT is doing a study um, to determine whether or not those families even got the fair market value for their homes as they were being displaced because there is a uh, pretty significant um, theory that they did not. Andrea Jenkins, vice so, president of the Minneapolis City Council, is behind a plan to revitalize the area with a focus on 38th in Chicago, the intersection where George Floyd was killed. I mean, I think the state has to play a role in righting those wrongs, um, and as, as does the city. And I think the first step in that is to acknowledge the harms. This is a passion. This gardening is a great thing, especially in this neighborhood. Greg McMoore is a longtime <laughs> resident and neighborhood advocate. I think there's a chance, you know? I think there's a chance for 38th Street and 4th Avenue to come back. Planting seeds to uplift those who live here. The untold story of Interstate 35W in South Minneapolis is a real chapter in Minnesota history. A moment in time that could chart a new path for this community. You know, you can't live in history, you can't live in the past, but you can learn from it. Right now, the research that Professor DeNorfio led is on display at an exhibit at the Hennepin History Museum. It's called Human Toll, a Public History of 35W. It runs until October of next year. Back to you. All right.